Yo, 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 Thought Warriors. What is up? Higher Learning is on. It is I, Van Lathan Jr. And it's me, Rachel and Lindsay. You get a haircut, Van? You get a little haircut? Yeah, I got it. I got it cut down, cut down to a one. I'm to that stage of life now. It looks good. Got to get it cut down to a one. My barber, shout out to Trey Cuts. He was like, Van, I got to be honest with you. He had a heart to heart with you? Yeah, he was like, we need to go to a one. And I was like, yeah, he's like, you got a good head of hair, but there's certain spots. And he was like, just, let's just go to a one. And that way, if I go to a one, I can I can come back and restore the hairline and y'all will never know. Because it's oh, too smart. long. So I'm going go to go to the one. Is that what Trey Cuts told you? I'm not going to divulge the secrets of what Trey Cuts and I discuss in terms of my... Because when I come back with the hair... You know how, like, some ladies beat the charge on Botox? They don't wait until... It gets to be, you know, yeah. preventative. the whole fucking, they do yeah. preventative measures, yes. Because yeah. it sounds like y'all have a game plan for your hairline. And um, he has one. You put, you he, put, you know, you started already. Step one. Yeah. Yeah, step one. Look, it's, it, it, I see these people like a Denzel Washington. And I think to myself, wow, what a great head of hair. But then I wonder, is it? We don't know. That's his hair. Yeah, it probably is. Because he went bald for the uh, equalizer and then it came back. Tom Cruise, I'm not so sure about, though. The Tom Cruises, the John Travoltas. Um, oh, we know John Travolta. We Matthew know McConaughey's Travolta. been a topic of conversation as of late. About the hair? Really? Mm-hmm. He's saying that it's been all natural. He says he uses something that has had, his because his hair is noticeably different than it has right. been in the last couple of years. Yeah. Why would God take the hair of a Matthew McConaughey? Why are we just singling him out? Why would God take the hair of a Van Lathan? Well, that's different. See, I'm not a Matthew McConaughey, right? My hair is probably thinning because I have all of these putrid thoughts, you know? Wow. At least you're And honest. I'm like, you know, I like my, I'm like, I got so much anxiety that my hair is like, yo, we got to get away from this nigga. And then he leaves. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but Matthew That's McConaughey is just like, sitting around. Just all right, all right, all right. Like, why would God take his hair? I'll Remember take his the hair. Fresh Prince episode where Jasmine guys on, and she and Will are going at it, trading jabs, and and she's like, "That ain't a fade on your head. That's your hair running away from your face." Do you yeah. remember that? I do remember that. Fresh Love Prince Jasmine of Bel Air ain't like that anymore. It's, it's not. It's it's there would very be no dark. laugh track after that. There would be no laugh track. I can't get into it. Have you watched it? I have. It's, it's a lot. Okay. I've only seen the and first I, episode. And so this is it's not that it's not good because it is good, but I think sometimes they should take a temperature. Well, they would never, they wouldn't never. Sometimes they just come out the wrong time. With everything going on, you think I want to turn on sad Will Smith for fucking fun? I need I, happy Will Smith. Yeah. I need happy Will. You know, it's like weird. It's like if that would have came out in 2016, 2017, no. where 2015, well, really no. more like 2014. 2014, we thought we were fucking having a great time. No. Obama was in office? Why? Why not? 2014? Oh. I, Obama was in office. They told us racism was over. All of this stuff was happening. We were like, oh, they told shit. Us racism was over. Oh, He'd been oh, in office for oh. six years. I think at that point, people were a little uh, disinterested. They weren't in the same still feeling dunking. they had. You were what? You know, still dunking. Oh. Boom. Wow. Bang. Bang. <laughs> I think for the people who grew up on Fresh Prince, the drama version of it is a little harder to accept and get used to. I heard give it till episode three and it really, like, I'll get into it. But Carlton is a tough watch, which means yeah. he's playing his part because I can't stand yeah. him. He's doing Came well. to the boxing they, gym a couple of days ago. You saw him? Came to the boxing gym. I wanted to punch his lights out. Yeah, I would have asked. Shout out to, to Demetrius, to and a very nice kid. A um, may a um, nice kid was in the boxing gym. I said, "I want to punch your mouth. How about that? You treat Will terribly, cokehead. I want to punch your, I want to punch your face apart." Giving things away. You, have you ever met someone that was like doing a fictional character, and then you saw them, but you couldn't get past the fictional character that they played? You ask me, is there somebody like that? Yeah, for you. I'm sure there is. Right. I just can't think of it right now. I, 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 you know what? Drew Sedora. And I actually told her that. I have a hard time getting past what she did 
to Melody and Derwin's relationship in the game. I never watched that show. Wow. Yeah. You have no idea what you're missing. That's a funny show. I watched that. At the Wendy beginning. Raquel Robinson is just yeah, amazing. Yeah, sunflowers, the whole being some wow, beans, sunbeams, sunbeams, sunbeams. Sun I watched beams. it. I watched it at the beginning, but I found myself becoming. In, this is what I have a problem with shows that are shows that have sports in them. It's hard for me sometimes because. I know that these niggas don't look like how these guys look that play these sports. It's like, it's hard for me to just watch Just because it. they're not big and tall? Just because I know, like, shout out to Spencer Pacinger, who is my man, uh, who is a producer on All American, who is, it's his story, Spencer Pacinger. Shout out to Spencer Pacinger. All American is great, except for the fact that the football in All American sometimes can be fucked up and that, and that show is so good that I'm that I'm still into it. I love that shit. But like Never seen it. other shows, sometimes like Derwin ain't getting no yeah, Derwin ain't not Derwin but, ain't. It's not having it. But you Derwin. know what? And I hope my thought our thought warriors watch both these shows so they can weigh in. The show isn't as much about their play on the field as it is off the field. So I'm not sizing them up and saying oh like Derwin really wouldn't be this star wide receiver or Malik wouldn't be this quarterback based on his size and he stature. would be I'm not looking at that because that's not the show isn't about they rarely show them they show them coming off the field after yeah, games they yeah. show them in the locker room that's what they do so way to go we won it's cool they don't do that they don't do that show that. came back to the game as a drama as a drama Reboot it, make it a drama. I hope that they take a drama and reboot it as a comedy. That's what they really okay, should Okay, but which drama? Like, I could never see... Well, I was about to Precious. say... Precious? No, I was about to say Succession. I'm doing shows, doing TV shows, not movies. But there are funny parts in Succession. Succession's so funny as hell. It, but it's yeah. a drama. But it's a drama. That's Just what bring it's Precious. Precious Boys That's, in the Hood. Those, bring Boys movies. in the Hood. You want to see Bring movies. Boys in the Hood to... To TV as a comedy, but leave the death in there. Just leave it in there. It's nothing funnier than a black funeral. I just saw a black funeral. I just saw a black funeral, literally, where I'm going to show you the video, Rachel, where the person was laying in the casket and they did a choreographed Who's dance they? routine in front of they, some of the people, like they was cutting up and twerking. In front of the casket at the funeral, we know we we no. we get it. Was the per- was this like a joke? If you it told wasn't me it a was joke. praise dancing, I could maybe accept it. Yeah. Can you shake your ass doing praise dancing though? No, Is that okay? that's how I know. you know I used to praise dance. You did. Whoa! I'm gonna send Rachel, you a video. I'm you you were really in the church, like you were doing the church clap where you bend at the wrists and you clap like that. Like the church clap? What were you doing? Okay, with the I don't know dancing? what that is. That wasn't a part of the dance routine. That is what y'all do. What do y'all do? What did y'all do? Y'all dance with you Jesus? Know, we did like you know, like some of these. Terrible. No. <laughs> I was Terrible. Sent you a video. <laughs> it was so, really good. <laughs> were you one of the Christian side hug people? No. Like no. Like you know, up yes, there I giving a exactly positive what message. You're talking about. Yo, see, let me tell you why the Christian arm front hug person. Let me tell you why the Christian side hug people. If you guys have never seen this, this video, we might have talked about it on the podcast before about people telling so. you not to hug. This is an old video. Y'all, y'all have heard of give me that Christian side hug. It's like don't hug. Don't line up your genitals when you hug because that's of the devil, right? You know what I mean? That's that's inappropriate is what they said in the video. And they were like, give me that Christian side hug. Wait, there's was a video? A, Yo, Donnie. I need you to find the Christian side hug video right now and play a little bit of the song that they were singing Songs. for Rachel. Okay, no, now you it's know It's a I rap was, song. I was deep called in Give this. Me That Christian Side Hug. I Donnie, you were being please. Funny. I play it. You were being Donnie, funny. share the sound real quick. Play the Christian side hug. Play it. Play it. No front hugs and no kissing. I ain't that 
get to call your mama. You'll be rolling home in a coma. I got my crew. You ain't got nothing. Not the end. Follow these rules. Yeah. Cause we ain't bluffing now. You ain't no enough. rapper. Enough. You ain't enough, Donnie. I've heard enough. Who's the artist? Whoa. Who's the artist? I can't remember the name of him. Donnie knows Probably who found the song. Like the Jesus Kids or something. Donnie, you've heard of the Christian side hug before, haven't you? No, nah, man, you put me on to something new now. I got to download this to my life. Is that true? Of, I think yeah. you so put look. a lot of us. I knew of the Christian side hug. I never knew that it had become a song. I never knew that there were lyrics. There was a beat. There's I choreographed <laughs> dance moves as well. Oh. Uh, yeah. Sometimes I wonder if I, if I don't have a life or if you guys, I can't believe you all heard of the Christian side hug, but, but forget, forget about that. Let me tell you why the Christian side hug kids are doing harm to Christianity, right? How this happened. I'm in a G chat with my brother and all of his atheist friends. And they made fun of me for being a Christian. This is what atheists do. They're not happy enough with the fact. And by the way, I'm not dissing the atheists. But I would sometimes just say to them, hey, you know, believe what you believe. I would sometimes say to them, hey, just let me let me live my life and believe in God. It's okay. You know, but when something like the Christian side hug becomes a thing it's a free for all i then become the butt of all of the jokes like man these are people <laughs> and it's like being that corny and that earnest about something that has no bearing on anything they have no idea how much they hurt us yeah hurt us it's, it's, it's terrible the christian you, side you can't it. defend that there's there's no comeback to that you all you can do is just sit there and take it i mean that's embarrassing it's one thing to talk about it. It's another thing <laughs> to try to make it a thing. And the fact, Donnie, what do the choreograph moves look like? Or Van, you you sound like you know. Sound like you were hitting that choreograph. So they so they jump they jump up and then they jump to the side. They jump up and then they jump to the side. They like jump a up, you like kind of. Like um, Donnie, bring it to me. Give me back, Donnie. Um, give me that shit. Hey. Oh. Hey. Inappropriate. Come on. Pure, oh, oh we got to do. Give me that Christian side. That Christian side. Oh, 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 Jesus. I'm a rough rider. Christ love, man. No. Stop. I'm a rough rider. Trudy. You never heard the Christian side hug? Never in my life, ever. And I went to a Christian school. I ain't Thank never you. heard of this. I mean, I was deep in it, and I have never heard this. Also, you guys DC are younger talk? than me. Is it DC no, Talk? No, it's not DC Talk. This is like some, I think this was like some group at some church. I don't know if this was a real Christian rap group. Because I feel like you're a little older than me, but we... We're still like we both knew about the power team. You know what I'm saying? Like, I know, I, but this was this wasn't that at that time though. This is like 2009, 2010. So you would have still been actually. Yeah, doing oh, I had already gone to life. college. I was lost. Yeah. yeah, Christian side hug. Anyway, what else you been doing this week, Rachel? What's been going on? Man, it's been a it's been a busy busy week. It's feel, I feel like it's a long week. I'm like it's only Thursday, Friday when y'all are listening to this. It's just all I've been doing is working, 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 working. It's one of those weeks where it doesn't matter what kind of dent I make in my to do list, I still am drowning. It's one of those. But you know what? I have all next week off. You do. So you know, I'm no just, extra. No extra. No, no extra. extra. I'm gonna go to Houston. I'm gonna go see my grandma. And, and some family. It's amazing. Ringerverse fans not too pleased with you. None too pleased with Rachel Lindsay. What they say? Y'all, no, no, no. They're supposed to be the nice ones. They are nice. So what's but the problem? But they said, look, there's some talk that you said that all we do is think about fake shit and we live in a fake world. You do. None of that it's shit is true. real. <laughs> Why y'all mad at me? You, none of the stuff you talk about is real. That's what, not true. What it, it's it's a fact. It's not true at all. Wait, did the did your your audience say this or your co-host? Well, the co-host didn't know about it, but oh, so I saw you some, brought this to their attention? No, 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 no. I didn't bring. We didn't talk about it. No, okay. some people that listen to the podcast was like, "Why we got? Why we got to be fake?" <laughs> As Rachel, why we got to be fake? They're not fake. Look, here's the thing: Batman is fake, but the Batman movie is real. What? 
So no, no. Wait, what, what, what you mean? It's real. Batman is not a Batman is a fictitious story. Correct. Act- but the actual movie is an actual real feature film. Correct. So we're talking. So we're talking about something real. But it's based off a fictitious person, story, characters. But it still book. is is a real thing. All of this stuff is real. This is our real lives, Rachel. This These is are what hobbies. we love. These are hobbies. Yeah. These are hobbies. The and I, uh, hobby. look, you done got copper all worked up. It's been copper a while. Knows I'm right. It's been a while since he's been worked up. He's not trying to copper. Hear copper knows I'm right. Copper knows I'm right. I ain't got nothing against the Ringerverse fans. You know what I mean? Don't I just want to. I, wanted, I just want Van to know where his loyalty lies. Okay. We where? were first. What? T- talk about the Reddit? No. Higher oh. learning. Oh, higher learning is. I love the Thought Warriors. It's just that one group of Thought Warriors. There's a that listen. There, the Reddit was. Po- I saw the Reddit. I saw the Reddit this week, and I got to. Oh, you went to the. You let went me, to the Reddit. Let, let me just say something. I saw the Reddit this week, and I've uh-huh. been defending y'all like crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and then I saw one of the subs, and I said, "Y'all got to be kidding me." You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah, now right. you done piss me off. <laughs> And I know it's not everybody, and I'm not going to hold the whole thought. I'm not going to generalize the entire Thought Warriors community. Oh God, but I understand it. Van's frustration. It's like, we are not perfect. We don't even try to be. We put our faults, our emotions, you know what I mean? Our frustrations all out on this podcast. And you're going to take it and pick apart. We, we are going to make some mistakes. We don't get it right. And we oh, come I got to go see it now. Well, and we come to on get this you, podcast I, and we say right. when we're wrong. I get that that but to put a whole post over criticizing us i'm at the point where i'm like for that one person just walk away when we make a mistake <laughs> we'll own it and i'm and i'm a person who loves constructive criticism lord knows i do it every true. day in the Lindsay household i love it because it only makes us better I know, that was different in the Lindsay household though. but but constructive criticism i truly feel like only makes you better but when you're out to bash and to nitpick Lindsay's. then it's yeah. just like you know what Go find another <laughs> podcast. You know what I, mean? I didn't I even just, see. It. I don't even know what you're talking about. Don't go look at it. Don't I'm not go okay. Look I'm, at not, it. I'm not going back because I've been. I, I can't go back. I can't go back. But, but God I damn it, now it. I want to see. You done pissed me off. How did you see it? Somebody sent it to you. Or no, you were browsing the sun? I'm on Reddit. I'm on oh, Reddit, yeah. and I right. almost respond. I almost responded, no, but no, no, I want to no, keep no. it a space, a community. But it's just like you guys, you know, like bring bring something to the table when we do something <laughs> wrong. Bring questions, bring thought provoking topics. We love that. But don't don't bash us in a way that's just it's just it doesn't even make any sense. It's just uh, it's just too much. What are you doing Saturday? Um organizing and packing. Would you be down for game night? I'm thinking about having a game night. Only um, the no, thing no. is. Yes, say no more. Okay. But here's the deal though. And this is the question. I don't know which games to have at game night. Taboo. So, Taboo? I'll bring it. You'll bring Taboo. Now, remember, this is going to be me, you, and the Midnight Boys. So, are these Taboo-type niggas? Oh, so niggas? I'm coming in hot. They, were they talk, was my name in their mouth? No. They never <laughs> said this. I love how you just <laughs> dropped your shit on them. No, they never said I liked, nothing. I've, I've met the Midnight Boys. Yeah, you met the Midnight Boys. So um, what what are the what are the game night suitable games? So taboo is one, but it's not like Monopoly, right? Monopoly's not a good one, right? No, 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 no. Monopoly is not a good one. You need like cards against humanity. Um, a lot of people like apples to apples. I don't really understand that game. I, I think I played it once. You know what, Thought Warriors give us some more, but taboo is for sure. That's yeah. competitive. We're gonna split up in teams. Oh, what about heads up? Oh, okay. You ever play that one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Heads up is We fun. played that one in it. We played that. Okay, so we'll do Taboo and Heads Up, and then we're just going to get fucked up. It's, I I'm love just going to drink. Gosh, I don't need this kind of distraction, but I, I'm just but gonna I need this drink. kind of distraction at the same I'm time. I'm just going to drink. Drink. Might be, I've been working out so hard. Might drink, have a little pizza. Who Great. Knows? So we're hosting it at your place? <laughs> it's coming at my, my place. Okay. Bozeman's going to be there. I'll get party hats for everyone like we did the last time. I don't know why I'm obsessed with the party hats. It's a I, thing. I was wearing I, it down the hall. Somebody was like, happy birthday. And you know what I said? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Just you come in. That way, I feel like the party hat, when you have the little party hat, nobody can opt out. We all look so dumb with the party hats on 
that we have no choice but to have a good time. All right. It's copper. Uh, the podcast, and huh? Of course. We got we got to post the picture of Copper and uh Bozeman together when they finally met. We got Copper the is the coolest dog. Copper That's Copper was cool. just hanging out. Like he he actually brought Bozeman's anxiety level down cuz Bozeman could go crazy. But Copper was being cool, so Bozeman was being cool. Bozeman a follower. All right. Um <laughs> Got a lot of very, very interesting topics today. Slam show, slam show. We're gonna come, we're gonna take a break, come back, get to the big deal of the day, which is of course this whole Ryan Coogler situation. All right, Rachel. I don't feel like this topic needs much of an of an introduction. Mm-mm. You guys have heard it's the everywhere. story by now. Ryan Coogler, Black Panther director, also the director of Fruitvale Station, also the director of Creed One. Uh Bank of America has apologized to Ryan Coogler after he was assumed to be a bank robber and briefly handcuffed by the police. He was trying to withdraw money from a Bank of, Mer- bank of America branch in January. This is what happened, in case you guys don't know, but I know that you do. Coogler handed a teller a withdrawal slip on January 7th asking for $12,000 with a note on the back saying, be discreet when handing him the cash. This is according to a police report. The teller assumed or thought that there was some potential danger that maybe Ryan Coogler was attempting to rob the bank, she called 911. Or, excuse me, went to the manager, and then the manager made the decision that we we're going to call 911. This is the 911 call. Yeah, so I just told my manager I didn't feel comfortable, so he told me to call police while he, I guess, stalled. What is, the, what is on the note, ma'am? Um, it just says I want to withdraw twelve thousand dollars. Um, just be discreet. Is this an actual customer, or are they trying to rob the bank? They had a debit card, and he inserted it. He gave me a California ID, but I was like, okay. Um, I was like, how do you? I was like, how do you want the cash back? And he's like, just look at the note. And he had no weapons, correct? Not that I know of. He just has on black sunshades and a black, uh, um, a black hat. Is he a black male, white male? He's a black male. And every time I ask him, like, a question, he's like, look at the note. So, okay. But he inserted his debit card, and then I asked for his ID. He handed me his ID as a California ID. But I didn't look at his name because I'm just, like, so shook up. Like, I don't know what he's trying to do. So I just told him, give me one moment. You know, I have to get my manager. Okay, so none of his information was even verified. Okay. He might just want to be discreet, but I have police around. Okay, uh, there were other people involved with this. Of course, there was a driver because uh, uh, Ryan Kulik was driven there. Um and the driver told the cops when the cops got there that Mr. Kugler was a movie producer and that he was waiting for Mr. Kugler while he was making a transaction inside the bank. A woman who was a passenger uh, gave the same information. The cops detained the driver and the passenger as well, put them in a patrol car. They then removed Mr. Kugler from, Kugler from the bank in handcuffs. Uh, they determined he wasn't a bank robber. Okay. Um, so there's two more pieces of video uh, of audio here. Ryan Coogler. One is Ryan Coogler talking to police after his release. The other one is the detainment audio itself. Um, there's also video of the moment that the cops come in and descend upon Ryan Coogler. He looks absolutely terrified, as he would have uh, in that type of situation. That is pretty much, I think. Oh, by the way, just so everyone knows, the bank teller in this situation is black, a black pregnant lady. Um most of the employees in this branch of Bank of America, which is in Atlanta, are black. Uh, so a lot of people said that that's very key to understanding this in terms of the racial dynamics here. But that's pretty much the whole story. Rachel, what do you think? Well, I first of all, we should also say that this happened in January. We're just January actually 7th, yes. getting the details of what happened now, two months later. Um, I am glad that the information came out in totality the way that it did because when i initially heard it there was no information about that he provided his debit card and he provided his identification but that came out shortly after um first of all i'm going to go ahead and give my unexpected ally of the week early to the 911 operator even though i'm pretty sure she was a black woman 
I'm just going to go ahead just to give it out to the whole system because I think that 911 call is so key in all of this. If you thought that this was a real bank robbery, the, the teller didn't sound distressed. She didn't sound alarmed. She didn't sound agitated. It was just kind of like, yeah, so this man is in here acting very weird. So my, because I felt uncomfortable, my manager told me to call you. Even the 911 operator sounds doubtful. Like, well, he ain't got any weapons. Did he show identification? Okay, well, it sounds like he just wanted to be discreet, but I'm going to go ahead and do my job and follow through and, and the police are en route. This, scene, this whole situation is entirely upsetting. And I think even more so because it does involve black people, black people judging other black people. Uh, this is completely unnecessary. It is actually, and for the people that I know that this is a split, like on Twitter, there was some back and forth as to some people are on the side of the teller and the bank and the other people are on the side of Ryan Coogler. But the thing is, we're living in very different times, but even if we weren't, it is absolutely normal for people to not want to shout through a thick glass, bulletproof glass, the amount of money that they want to take out. That is normal to write it on a piece of paper, pass it through, and then ask for you to count the money separately in a, in a private place so that people won't follow you out and know the amount of money that you took out. If this whole situation would have been different for me, if Ryan was passed the note and, and refused to do anything else, said no words, provided no debit card, provided no pen, provided no identification, that was not the case. He was fully identified himself and said exactly what he wanted. That's what you do when you walk into a bank and you talk to a teller. And the fact that this situation was exaggerated, the fact that it was done by a black woman, in my opinion, makes it even worse and it shows that there are these preconceived notions and these implicit bias that we have even within our own culture. Um, it's so upsetting. I hate that Ryan went through this. Um, and, I'm, and I'm happy that he is safe, not just him, but the driver and the female passenger in that car as well, because this situation could have really been a completely different story because we've seen it happen time and time again. Ryan did everything right. He did everything that he was supposed to do, and he was still judged. And 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 certain biases were placed bias were placed on him by his very own people. It's so upsetting. So <clears throat> there was a situation here in LA not too long ago. This guy named Bootleg Kev. Bootleg Kev is a radio. Why are you laughing at the man? I name, like the Rachel? name. His <laughs> Bootleg Kev is his name. Shout out to Bootleg Kev. Bullet Kev has a very popular podcast right now. If you're interested in the goings on in West, Ho West Coast hip hop culture, check out the Bullet Kev podcast. It's great and it's growing. Um, also used to do a radio show with DJ Head. Um, shout out to DJ Head as well. There was a situation last year, I think it was, where Bullet Kev went to the bank in Burbank, Los Angeles. Now, if you guys don't know about Burbank, Burbank is a nice low crime area. Uh, Burbank is a cool place to go. Like it, you shouldn't have that many problems in Burbank, right? Yeah, I Tim work Burton there. Grew up I go in there Burbank. every day. Burbank, okay, so Burbank, cool place, right? Not, not, it's not really going down to Burbank. Um, <clears throat> goes there, takes out ten thousand dollars. Somebody watches him at the bank. Then he walks outside. They follow him. He makes another stop. They get out. They rob him. They take his money, they take his laptop, they take all of his stuff. Uh, it was a particular phenomenon of watching people outside the bank descending upon them and taking the money that they've just gotten. It's easy. It's, it's like robbing season all over the place. It's bad out there. And Atlanta, to be honest with you, was one of the places where, let's be honest, sometimes it goes down in the ATL. Not trying to cast any spurs on Atlanta. Don't want T.I. and Killer Mike telling me about how great the city is. I know that Atlanta is a great place. But there are wolves in Atlanta, and they will do their wolf motherfucking shit. Especially in the times that we're talking about right now. I think it's so interesting, and I said this on Instagram, it just epitomizes what it's like to be a black man sometimes. Now, you think to yourself, hey, it's irresponsible for me to walk in there 
get $12,000 out, especially when there are two other people in the car, right? Because the driver's in the car and then the passenger's in the car. It's irresponsible for me to get this money out, walk out, oh shit, we breaking bread, blah, 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 and be, and be out there about it. So I want to be as discreet as possible. I don't want to even say to anyone. He said, the note says, don't even do the money counter thing over here. Like, don't like do it somewhere else and just bring the money out to me. Look, guys, I understand that there's <clears throat> an obvious racial element that's subtracted from this situation because of the fact that the teller was black and Ryan Coogler is black and the people that work in the bank are black. I'm not even talking about that. I'm talking about not everything, every sort of situation that we're in is the man sitting there behind the desk pushing buttons at us, making sure that we die. It's not always that cut and dry and that straightforward. This is a situation to where who knows if Ryan Coogler is in a similar situation. If he's white, he walks into that bank and hands the lady that letter. But even if he is, <clears throat> he's certainly, in my opinion, uh, in a much, much more dangerous situation once the cops get there because right. he's black. Right. Right. So in this situation, <clears throat> there is a no win situation for everyone involved unless one thing hap happens. Unless the people at the bank just do their job. And their job is to look at a situation mm -hmm. and be able to ascertain whether or not there's an actual danger or robbery taking place. I, I don't know how many bank robbers in the history of bank robbery have given their debit cards Thank and you. their identification to the bank teller. I'm sorry to say this because this is a black lady. That black bank teller is incompetent. Uh huh. She's incompetent. Mm -hmm. And it's difficult. If she were, I'm going to be straight up honest with you. If she were white, if it were a white man or a white woman, I'd be calling for their hair right now. The only reason why I'm not, the only reason why I think suspension and extra training is because I don't want to see a black woman lose her job. But she should definitely be suspended or fired. And the manager in that particular branch should actually have to go through some additional trainer as training as well. The, the whole situation is just dumb. And I got to say something else. Everybody here that's saying don't slip a note, don't pass a note, don't do this, don't do that. I understand that some of you guys are saying, hey, just make sure that you don't put anybody in a situation where they feel threatened. I understand that's what some of you mean. But some of y'all are just white man's niggas. Straight up. I'm going to be honest with you. Some of y'all are just white man's niggas. When you talk about living in a society, it doesn't mean do everything to make sure somebody knows. It just means do what you're supposed to do. Right. Like, was he supposed to start taking off his clothes and letting people know that he didn't have a weapon on him? Like, how far does it go? Like, my whole thing is, I understand that some people always want to find fault in what we did. And there's some sort of putrid dream, gene inside of your brain that makes you want to believe that every single thing that happens to a nigga is because he deserved it. But you're supposed to be able to go in the bank, do, like withdraw money, and if you don't want to talk to the teller, I have to talk to the teller. It's mm. just so many failings on all of this. And we just don't have a good enough relationship with the cops for me to be okay with the cops coming out, cuffing a man when they're not supposed to, mm. a black man. Mm. It's nuts. I actually think, I actually disagree with you on what should happen to her. Because she thought a situation was suspicious, even though she's wrong for that, and she went to her manager, her superior. That's where the problem, that's where he's supposed to have the expertise to figure out the situation. He's in a, he's in a higher position. He has more training. He has more experience. He should have asked the particular questions. He should be fired. Hands down, he should be fired. Well, I... I I don't see how you could divorce because he's the one who told culpability. Her. So no, no, I'm not saying that she's not wrong. I'm just saying she felt a certain way, not justifying it because I've already given my piece on that. She went to her higher up at that point. I feel like it was her higher ups responsibility to just say, let me handle the situation. Did he give you his ID? Did he give? let me, let me look at the computer. Let me look at his account. Oh, that's him. I'm looking at his identification. He has the money. This has happened before. It is not abnormal, you guys. I, I was having this conversation at work with a white, older cameraman, Mel, who said, 
People do this all the time. He said he started doing it because he saw other people in the bank. He said, it's awkward to shout the amount of money that you want withdrawn. It is normal to write it down on a piece of paper and pass it through. So you're not yelling it. Like we were having this conversation. It's, it's, it's not abnormal. So to me, that is where the manager with his knowledge and expertise steps in and says, you know what? You feel a certain way. Step to the side. Let me handle this situation. He told her instead to call 911. Well, no, he told her if she felt threatened to call 911. But if she calls rather 911. Rather than diminishing the situation. He, like, he could have he could have handled this. I, I get it. But I don't feel like we can pass the buck here. I do. Like, I really don't. I, I really don't feel like we can pass the buck here. Like it, I, I, I know that people, we, we cannot pass the buck here. Even as she explains it, it's infuriating to yes. listen to her explain it to the 911 right. operator. It's like, yes. He gave me his debit card. Yes, he gave me his California ID. Like, yes, he did all of these things. Even I'm looking at what's written. She's reading what's on the back of the note. Right. Like, you guys, first of all, we can't act like there's not some sort of that just because you're black, you might not have internalized anti-black sentiment inside of you. Right. So, right. so, so for me, I don't understand how she gets divorced of consequence in this situation at all. So she is a subordinate to her manager, manager uh -huh. of that, that bank. There's no way that the way she described that situation to that 911 operator, she did not describe it in the same way to that manager. Right. That manager at that point should have been asking the same questions to that 911 operator and said, you know what, let me handle this situation. To me, it sounds like for him to be like, you know what, if you feel uncomfortable, call 911. That sounds very dismissive. That sounds like somebody who was not in control and trying to handle the or situation. Or maybe the manager was scared as well, right? If if somebody comes over but to you, but when the manager call, like it just it, there's but, but, fault there's fault on wait, both sides. I'm not saying there's know, not fault on her side. I'm just saying the higher responsibility to me belongs to the superior because he I got mean, involved. Sure, but like in that situation, if you walk over to your manager, so if we're playing the card that like you're scared, so because you're scared. That in in some sort of way, I'm not saying that you're necessarily saying this, but if we're saying that fear is sort of the get out of jail free card here, right? Well, if she walks over to the manager and the manager has any suspicion that there could be a bank robbery taking place, the manager is not going to be too keen about walking back over to the booth and standing in front of somebody who might have a gun on them, who might be dangerous or violent. And so the manager is going to not be in this situation. I think the manager is wrong too, but the manager being in this situation is going to be like, yo, look, if you think that the bank is being robbed, we need to call the police because if the manager goes back over there and, is, and, he, and he or she is wrong, I guess it's a man and, and he's wrong and, a, and, a, and the blicky gets pulled on him. Now nah, his life is in danger, right? So for me, I'm looking at that situation and I'm like, everybody failed. Everybody needs to be dealt with and everybody needs to be at the least like have a little time off to go get some retraining on this situation. Correct. And I've just got to keep it gangster. But my original, your original answer was in regards to her. And my response was, this is a person who has more knowledge and experience and is supposed to be the expert in this situation. This is the type of person who could step in and say, what are the facts? Okay, well, that is actually normal. Or, or you know, this has happened before. Oh, they provided identification, a pin, and their debit card. So I was just, my response is more into, it's not just her. Her superior also needs, if not the same, even more responsibility in the way that he handled this situation. Because she went to him because she was concerned and for advice. And his response was, call 911. Like, he didn't handle well, it right at all. I did. I know. I know. Agree to disagree. Sure. We both say it was a bad situation. We can, we can, we can parse out who should be whatever. But look, you guys, it's tough to say that consequences should be like dealt out to one of somebody in the community. It's tough to say. And obviously you don't want a little black baby being born to a woman that doesn't have a job. I know, but you y'all, you know, we at these jobs, you know what I'm saying? This is not my bank. This is not Van's bank. Well, that I just started walking to Van's bank, which would be a lit bank. We give you a fit the Hennessy with every account that you open. Come on now. This is the Bank of America. 
this is a bank it's been around for a long time there should be standards and stuff there that's not to say that banking black means that this should be allowed to happen either because fantastic black banks everywhere maybe we should start thinking about some of those as well but i'm just saying gotta be better than this and sometimes we should be able to tell each other in the community when we need to be better sure and my question is thankfully ryan coogler lived to tell this story if he had not would your opinion change on the way that she handled the situation that's what people uh, need to be at. Not you. Wait. That's a rhetorical. That's a question people need to be asking themselves. Like, I right. think it's easy to say, oh, you know, like, feel sorry for her and defend her because he lived to tell his story. Had he not, because of her actions, would you have a different response? That's the question people need to be asking themselves. All right. Uh, Kim Kardashian has a message for you guys, you lazy punk motherfuckers. <laughs> She's sick of your fucking shit. She's sick of your shit. Kim Kardashian was, did an interview with Variety. They talked to her about being a mogul. She is a mogul. She is a mogul. Lots of different businesses. She's She's very, very successful. This is what Kim Kardashian had to say to all the women out there who, uh, who want to be just like her. I have the best advice for women in business. Get your fucking ass up and work. It seems like nobody wants to work these days. You That's have to, so true. You have to surround yeah. yourself with so people true. that want to work. <laughs> Have a good work environment where everyone loves what they do because you have one life. No toxic work environments and show up and do the work. Do it. Do it. You lazy bitches. I can't believe y'all. I'm with Kim. <laughs> Man, Kim I'm not right. going to entertain this. You Kim know what's right. so sad about this situation is that if you watch the video, you, you you have to watch the video. Don't listen to the audio. You've got to see her say it because you can tell. And if you watch the full video, the question was proposed and actually Chloe answered it first. And she had a beautiful answer about do things that you're passionate about because you're going to put more effort into it. You're going to meet, you're going to love what it is that you're doing. You're going to believe in it because the passion was there. It was a nice answer. And then you see Kim kind of shift her body language and say, actually, you know what? And you can tell she wanted to have this badass girl boss moment and say Mm -hmm. something that she thought was so profound. And she failed. What was supposed to be a very positive interview highlighting this new show, this new era for the Kardashians now turned out to be somewhat of a joke as people are like, Kim, It's very tone deaf what you said. You were extremely disconnected from what's happening in society. And actually what you said makes no sense. Mm. Um, It also shows me that maybe the reign of the Kardashians might be coming to an end. Because Mm. people are no longer willing to accept. If she had said that, if she said that pre-pandemic, she said that years ago, I think people would have been like, yeah, get up and do it. But now... With, the, with what's happened over the last two plus years where people are drowning in debt. People have had to make choices between childcare and healthcare and their jobs. Mm. People are overwhelmed by working long hours for low pay. It just shows how disconnected you are in the sense that people are working grocery store jobs. You know what I mean? Retail, grocery, grocery store. Grocery store. Mm-hmm. Retail, doing whatever they can, three plus fuel jobs city. to make it fuel city tacos to make ends meet to provide for their families. And you're over here saying, you know what actually you need to do is just get the fuck up and work. As if it's just that simple. And I and 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 I will say this, because I'm not gonna totally bash Kim. I think Kim. that what her point was is that she was mm-hmm. trying to say that a lot of people we live in a society where there is a sector where people feel like things should just be given to them, where people, you know, want things to come easy for them. A lot of people talk about this with Gen Z, but the way she said it, the timing she said it, it just fell, it was completely wrong. And um, Hmm. what she was trying to come across, the way she was trying to come across did not come across the way she wanted to. (laughs) It's true. But you agree, so, you know, go ahead, defend her. I do. I do. I'm gonna, uh, well, look, I'm not even going to talk about Kim Kardashian. I'm going to do what I do best. I'm going to make this about me. Oh. Okay. Yeah. So, look, Kim Kardashian came across as incredibly self important in that clip, right? <laughs> and that's partly my fault. Oh. 
<laughs> it's probably ahead. my fault. It's probably my fault. Uh, it would be hypocritical for me to criticize Kim Kardashian, the Kardashian brand, and its lofty place in pop culture without recognizing that for nine years of my life, I was part of making sure that there was maximum exposure on every little thing that they were doing. You're right. On every little peccadillo that was happening in their lives, of every financial transaction, of every, hey, Kim Kardashian wants to be a lawyer, and Kim Kardashian wants to do this. And it was part of my job for a long time to continue to milk the golden calf. They were golden calf. You can't milk a calf, though. Is a calf a male? Or is it just a baby cow? Just a baby. Just a baby. Just a baby. You can't milk the calf. But it was to, to milk the golden cow that is the Kardashians. Okay? Look, that that's a, it's an elephant. elephant. But, <laughs> but you thought it was still, a golden calf. I thought it was a golden calf you before. Did. All right. And there, to me, lies the real lesson here. People are as important as we tell them that they are. Uh. Now, if I told you the real story of how Kim Kardashian got on, it, it, like, if I told you the real story that everybody knows, by the way, of oh. how Kim Kardashian got on, like, Kim Kardashian had stuff in her past. Uh, she had a legal issue with Brandy where Brandy thought she ripped her off for a whole bunch of money. Like, a lot of time, for a lot of people in the industry, that would be it, right? But Obviously, she was born with a silver spoon. And even if her silver, her spoon wasn't that silver, like, let's face it, part of Kim Kardashian's rise to prominence and rise, her next level of celebrity had to do with something that a lot of people wouldn't want coming out about them. Sure. I'm not going to shame her for any of that, sure. uh, any of those situations. But what I'm telling you is the thing that got Kim Kardashian that I most admire is she's taken a perception about herself thrown it to the back of her mind and continue to move forward in her life trying to make rules for herself. But that does not make her important enough to tell the working people of America that they have to work harder. Are there lazy people out there? Absolutely there are. But there is this false idea that the fucking best people are the hardest working people and the the lazier people are the ones that are dragging down society. If you haven't realized after the pandemic that that's a lie, then you really are a fucking dunderhead. Then you really are. As these people who worked their fucking asses off, right? When we were depressed because we couldn't go to bars, people who worked a worked shift after shift after shift, literally putting their lives on the line, so that the entirety of us could have some semblance, some semblance of normalcy. Even if you were thinking about saying that in the situation that Kim Kardashian has been to where we have given her this lofty height, this lofty perch for no reason. Kim, just win. Take your winnings and go. We don't need to know how you did it. We know how you did it. I'm not saying you don't. I'm not saying. You're not saying she doesn't work hard. I'm not saying she doesn't work hard at all. I'm saying she had to work a lot less than a lot of other people that didn't fucking go to Buckley, that weren't friends with Paris Hilton, that didn't have their Cabo tapes come out and make them $100 million, that didn't get hitched to one of the, a lot of things, a lot of stuff. Like, Kim Kardashian's worth ethic has made her a lot of money. But her name has to. And her situation has to. And I guess I just feel like she's perpetuating this dangerous narrative. It's like, Kim, who do you, what, what are you even basing this on? Who are you even looking at that you're like, you know what, you don't work and that's why you're in the situation that you're in. And I just feel like there's this disconnect. Oh, I think I know who she's basing it on. Oh, there are people like that, you know, out here in the L.A. streets. Who? You know, like, you know, you, you meet people, you know. And it's like, yo, I want to be an actress. I'm like, oh. Kim ain't meeting those class? people. Kim ain't meeting those people. 
So like, what? Hey, so man, like, I really what are you rap. reading? Like, you want studio time? What like, are you oh, reading? What are you? Who are you surrounding yourself with? You're not, and it's just this disconnect of people, the haves and the have-nots, where you think the have-nots don't have it because they aren't working hard and they're being lazy. You know what I mean? Like, it's it's. I, I just think it's a dangerous narrative to put out there when you really have no basis or evidence out there to say that, and then. I do know why you feel like you can say that when the people you're surrounding yourself with back you up. And that clip you guys just heard, Kim said what she said, and then you immediately hear Courtney say, that is so true. Based on what? Based on what? Like, I, I would encourage Kim and, and, and the rest of them to, like, really do the research and understand the problem behind what you just said. Don't just, don't just ignore the criticism. Don't hide behind it. Don't let it fade away until the next thing pops up. Really understand why people are upset with what you said. Yeah. Yeah. And just make sure that, you know, we don't need need, to hear from you. Just don't say stuff like that. Like, uh, I just, yeah. Just, just, You're just, just trying, you know, to, trying too hard to have a, just, a, you know, a just, badass moment. I, I know that they asked her the question. Chloe's answer was fantastic. Yeah, Chloe's answer. Chloe's answer was good. Chloe seems like she's probably the one that has the most sense, except in one area. Um, next topic. <laughs> was that a, that was a cheap shot? You feel like? <laughs> no, it was not a lie. I mean, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, war in Ukraine. The war in Ukraine rages on. There have been talks between Ukraine and Russia uh, about. Temporary ceasefires in terms of uh, making sure that some people can get to safety. A lot of bullshit that's happening right now. Russia has intensified its air attack on Ukraine. Uh, NATO and other pe- pe- people's intelligence have said that Russia has intensified its attacks on Ukraine's civilians. And there's an American general who says that the worst is yet to come. Mm-hmm. That the next couple of weeks in Ukraine are going to be the worst. We're still dealing with... Uh, completely putrid humanitarian crisis that's going on over there. Still people need help. Still people are trying to get out. Still people are trying to find their way to safety. Um, it. I'm not so sure how close we are to the end of this. Um, it initially wasn't going as good for Putin uh, as I think that he had anticipated that it would. But since then, even though the Ukrainians continue to fight with an unbelievable spirit. And I want to say something real quick. Okay. Two boxers. Alexander Usyk and Vasily Lomachenko. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Usyk is, has three belts. Beat Anthony Joshua is a heavyweight champion of the world, him and Tyson Fury. Lomachenko is just one of the most dazzlingly gifted boxers in the world right now. He recently lost his title. Well, last year, he lost his title to Tefimo Tefimo Lopez. He's come back a couple of times. He's currently not the champion, but we'll see what kind of noise he can make in 135. Both of those guys, millionaires, went back to Ukraine And joined the military to take up arms against Russia. This is the type of shit. This is the type of fighting spirit that is currently existing in Ukraine right now. They are not going down without a fight. Yeah. So, yeah. um, uh, uh, Still thinking about what's happening to the Ukrainian people. Right. And it's still fucked up. And I, oh. Go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, and I think that. I was listening to a podcast talk about this and this war has been going on for two weeks at this point, a little over two weeks. And, you know, you constantly hear about that, that Ukraine and Russia are in talks, but the latest news is those talks have failed. And I think that Putin thought with, with the army that he had and the amount of people that were within that, that Ukraine would back down and they haven't. And just as Van pointed out, even prominent people within this country who don't have to do this, who are are millionaires, are standing with their country. 
and are fighting for it. This is something that Russia and Putin weren't expecting. And, yeah. I, and when I was listening to this podcast, it was saying because of that, because of Putin's pride, because he has no soul or conscience, he was going to ramp up the way that he was invading Ukraine. And we've seen it. We've seen there have been over 700 missiles that have been launched upon Ukraine. This is what I heard in a podcast. Yeah. There have been residences, private residences attacked, hospitals. You saw yesterday, you saw the images. You know, I've spoken on this podcast and I've only been trying to read articles and I've been trying to stay away from the images, but I saw it yesterday of mothers pregnant, those who had just given birth, families, children being carried out of these residences, yeah. these hospitals. And they're saying that the worst is yet to come in the sense that it might even become chemical in the way that he's fighting this war. This is it's it's truly sad and it's devastating. And I know that we've talked about hoping to have somebody come on to the podcast and give an update and and delve into what's happening because we want to continue to bring awareness to what's happening. We don't want to get comfortable in our own lives just because we're a world apart from what's happening. It impacts us. It's devastating what's happening to Ukrainians. And we want to show our support and we want to show our alliance of, of, of what's happening. Yeah. So, you know, one of the things right now is the organization of humanitarian corridors to make uh, people who are fleeing from this easier. Uh, the Russians and the Ukrainians have seemed to agree on some of this stuff, but President Zelensky of Ukraine says that uh, the Russians are not really holding up their end of the bargain, that they are in some ways attacking or uh, sort of leveling attacks that are impeding people from being able to move freely through these corridors. And so I guess the main question that you would want to talk about as it relates to geopolitics or the main question I would want to talk about is what's the end game here? Yeah. If there is to be talks, and like I said, these two countries have been in contact with one another. If there are to be talks about a ceasefire, what sort of conditions would meet the bent would, would what sort of conditions would have to be in place for Vladimir Putin to stop attacking Ukraine? Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, short of a full scale taking over and annexing of the entire country, what would make him stop? What promises could be made if Ukraine promised to never join NATO? If Ukraine promised to if there was some sort of I have no idea, but like what's going to make him stop? And I haven't really seen that outlined anywhere uh, because it seems as if that his goal is to bomb the country into submission. Yes. March Russian troops in there and then kind of take over. So yes, we'll see because they've at this point, they've only taken over one city and it's a port. They have not been able to take over other cities, even though they've tried. And so that's why he is upping what he is doing because Ukraine has really shown resistance and has really been on the grounds fighting. There's also a political battle happening here stateside. Um, and the opinions seem to be on both sides about how deeply the United States is going to get into this. Uh, there have been all kinds of different deals. There were some deals with some fighter jets that uh, I guess, do we want to, no, I don't even want to get into that. But it, the United States seems to still be about supporting Ukraine Ukraine and supporting the people uh over in Ukraine but is very 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 sketchy about doing anything that could be misinterpreted misinterpreted as military support uh for Ukraine. So it's interesting. Yeah, it is. It's interesting. It's a tough situation for President Biden as well. Um all right, uh black people don't get the money that they deserve. Boom. According to a new report, several HBCUs have been underfunded by at least $12.8 billion over the last two decades. Forbes reports 18 HBCUs were underfunded by that amount compared to their white counterparts between 1987 and 2020. For, for instance, for the past 33 years, Tennessee State University received $1.3 billion less than it would have if it were funded at the same amount per student at the as the University of Tennessee 
Would you look at that? <laughs> Other schools such as North Carolina Agri- Agricultural and Technical State University, North Carolina A&T, which is in Greensboro, North Carolina, have been deemed the most underfunded of the HBCUs in all of these states. Okay, Forrest reported that in 30, plus, in 30 plus years, the HBCU has been underfunded by a whopping $2.8 billion, making it the most significant underfunded amount discovered by the magazine. That is uh, North Carolina A and T. It's a lot of other schools that are on this list. FAMU, one point nine billion dollars. Southern University in Louisiana, one point three billion dollars. Prairie View A and M in Texas, one point one billion dollars. So rounded out the top five. I am, of course, an alumnus of Southern University. I know firsthand we could have used that money. We could have used that money at Southern if for no other reason than to build a bigger pin. For the pet jaguar that we had. <laughs> the jaguar was named Lacumba. Was it? And they had this motherfucker living in a studio. Gotta be real with you. Studio apartment for Lacumba. Like Mike the Tiger, LSU's mascot, has a fucking six million dollar habitat. Oh my gosh. They built him a jungle. It's so crazy. Mike being that bitch like you broke motherfuckers looking at me. Like, throw me another big piece of meat. I'm going to eat that shit. I'm living a lap. You go, you, you come by Lacumba, man. Lacumba's in that bitch like, yo, man, somebody take me out. Somebody just end this. End this. I know I'm not supposed to be in this. It's literally like, it might be as big as the room that I'm in right now. It's not a joke. If you, if you drive wild. on the yard... I mean, they haven't had them in a while. But if you if you drive on the yard, it was all fucked up. Um. <laughs> anyway, so uh, these are things that are embedded uh, into all different levels of state government. This is according to N. Joyce Payne, the founder of the Thurgood Marshall College Fund, which notes the lack of funding as discrimination. They say to all the white schools, you can drive a Bentley. She said. To all the black schools, you can't have a car at all. Rachel, as a proud representative of one of the richest schools <laughs> in all. <laughs> <laughs> the University of Texas says a whopping $41 billion endowment. What are your thoughts on how these niggas can't even get a job? <laughs> First of all, I have no involvement in, in how much the endowment is at the University of Texas at Austin. At all. But this is what I will say. When people talk about how black people complain, how racism doesn't exist, just take a look at this. This isn't some opinion piece. This is research that was done for a Forbes article, okay? When we talk about systemic racism, this is what we're talking about. When you talk about how it is implemented into every system and institution that exists within this country, Ow! this is it, you guys. This is what we're talking about. These HBCUs are owed this money. These laws were enacted in 1887. This is federal land grant funding it's supposed to be matched by a non-federal source which is typically the state and if you go back and you look at this university of tennessee which is 77 percent white was getting four times that of tennessee state they weren't getting the money that was owed to them in Mississippi, the HBCUs had to come together to sue the state, the very source of their funding. They're, they're suing, they're fighting the very source of their funding, which is crazy, right? They're seeking justice from the very justice. people who are supposed to be giving them their money. They sued yes. the state of Mississippi for money that was owed to them, federal, like federally owed to them. There are laws in place for this. In 2002, they had to do this. $500 million was finally granted to them. It took 27 years for this to happen. And the Supreme Court, the U.S., not the state, the U.S. Supreme Court had to be involved for this to happen. You guys, this is ridiculous. There are laws in place. This is just money that is simply supposed to be. And when you talk about HBCUs and you wonder why they don't have the faculty, the students, the salaries, the research, the expansion, 
It is because money that is supposed to be owed to them simply under federal laws isn't even provided to them. They have to sue the very person that's supposed to be giving it to them. So you, when you talk about why they're behind, when you talk about systemic racism, it's stuff like this. I had no idea something like this even existed until Forbes put this out. It is ridiculous and incredible, and I say that in the negative sense, all at the same time. Let me see, let me guys let me create the, the 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 value of the HBCU for you guys, okay? All right. I'm gonna tell the story of a guy I know. He's no he knows who I'm talking about. This guy got kicked out of high school, right? Got kicked out of school. He was forced to go to a school in Baton Rouge that's called Second Chance Academy. Now, if you wonder what Second Chance Academy is, it's alternative just that. school. It's an alternative school. You gotta go to Second Chance Academy. Not many kids going to college, getting scholarships, getting the help that they need after high school coming out of Second Chance. I like the people at Second Chance. Second Chance is where you could go to really turn up because, you know, people at Second Chance was about to turn up. You feel what I'm saying? It's turn it up. Purpose, second Chance Academy. Purpose, purpose, okay. Um, this gentleman left Second Chance, went on to Southern University, which has open enrollment. I Meaning if you can pay, you can go. Okay, or at least it did when I was there. Open enrollment. All right. This is somebody who coming from where they came from in high school simply didn't have the skills that you would need. This is not a slow, dumb individual. This is somebody that coming from Second Chance Academy in high school didn't have the skills that they would need to go on and become a viable college student. Somebody who saw the importance and the value of higher education he went to Southern University. At Southern University, it's a situation where you can get time with your, with your, your professors, where you can go a semester, come back, take one off, go another one. It's an HBCU. It's about family. It's familiarity. For some people, that first HBCU year is senior year two of high school. Sure. Everybody talks a little bit more. Everybody's a little bit together. It's the same page. There's a familial aspect to it for a lot of people. This gentleman goes on to get his degree, then goes to law school, and now has a thriving law practice down there in Baton Rouge, where I'm from. No way he could do that at any other school but Southern because of the bonds and the ties that he was able to kind of build with the family aspect of the HBCU. HBCUs are schools that are amazing for anyone who wants to go to college. Just like I know that guy, I know kids that got into Harvard and chose to go to Southern sure. for the cultural aspect of it because their families went, because it's an, uh, it's an amazing place to be. You get the, uh, a top flight education in the classroom and you get a top flight education in life. But what I'm telling you is these institutions are needed and they are needed for the same cultural reasons that black people need each other everywhere else in America. And when you choke them, what you're really trying to do is choke us. Mm -hmm. And I'm sorry, that's what's always happened. That's what's always happened is anytime we've tried to better ourselves, the HBCU is a revolt against America. It's a revolution against America. It comes from a time to where we were thought, we were deemed unworthy for higher education. We couldn't go to your Stanford's and your Harvard's and your, your William and Mary's and your George Washington's and Georgetown's. And not only could we go to those places, but Georgetown University is actually responsible for some of my ancestors even being in Louisiana because the Jesuits at Georgetown were involved in the slave trade and made a land slave purchase that brought some blacks from where they were there to where I am to where they ended up in Maringouin, Louisiana. That is a fact. Look that up. So there are all kinds of other things precluding us from succeeding at these other colleges. Sure. The HBCU was a revolution against that. Places where we could go and get an education and we could build a power base and we could also build a set of community uh, for ourselves. Yes. I can't express to you guys how important these places are. Right? That brings us to our next point. So it is the anniversary of the American Rescue Plan. The administration took the time to talk about the fact that it, to actually break down where the money went as it, was, re, re, uh, as it relates to some of the HBCUs we were just talking about. $2.7 billion in funding for historically black colleges and universities were 
provided through the Higher Education Emergency Relief Fund the past year with more money to come. With more money to come. A lot of it's still coming, according to Picard. I talked to Picard Sellers about this. He says the money is coming. Uh, to create pathways of opportunity for black students. The fusion of federal funding among the largest ever in the countries for the country's HBCUs. This is something to me, I feel like Biden and them should be screaming from the high heavens. We're just talking about how this HBCUs are getting fucked over. They've been getting millions and millions and millions of dollars uh, through Herfany. They're going to even get more. You know, they've gotten some, but talk to Bakari about this. He says the money is still coming. A lot of these schools are going to get some much, much needed relief. Let's talk about who got what. Wait, Van, where does this breakdown live? Uh, Whitehouse.gov. You can go see it. Whitehouse.gov. You can go check out the breakdown. Millions and millions and millions of dollars for schools. That has been a part of the American Rescue Plan. Now, I know that there's some, look, I, I, I'm going to go through some of this, okay? By state and territory. Alabama, $334 million for 13 HBCUs. Alabama A&M, $60 million. Alabama State University, $42 million. All of these are rival slack schools. They get no love from me. Okay, I love the, let the me big, clap I got... for the fact that the funding is coming. <laughs> the funding is coming and it's going to be used to provide direct financial relief to students, which we know have really been impacted over the last couple of years. Bishop State Community College, 34 million. Lawson State, 34 million. Tuskegee, 30 million. All of these schools. Miles College, 18 million. All of these different places. Uh, Arkansas, 61 million for four HBCUs. Pine Bluff, $25 million. Shorter College, 13. Philander, Philander Smith. Philander. Oh, Philander Smith. I've never heard of this school. I thought it was Philander Smith in Arkansas. I thought they, they, they named that for Bill Clinton. Uh, $11 million. California, $13 million for one HBCU. We got one measly fucking HBCU in California. Uh, $36 million for Delaware. It goes on and on and on. I will get now to Louisiana. Southern University, $64 million. Uh, under this, two hundred and eleven million dollars for six HBCUs. Now, uh, so yes, this is money that these schools are going to get um, under this program. It's still coming to them, right? This is going to happen for them. Here's my question. Me and Bakari talked about this a little bit, and Bakari, we were talking about how best to make sure that this messaging gets out. I'm reading this from WhiteHouse.gov, and it seems to me that. This would be something that the White House would be beating the drum of <laughs> over our heads with these gigantic, gaudy numbers of funding that these HBCUs are going to get. Is it all have has the media dropped the ball on this? Black media, because I've been kicking Joe Biden in his ass, right? Has the media dropped the ball on this? Or the, does the White House need to be better in its messaging on how it gets the word out about this amazing stuff that it's doing? Hmm. Amazing to who is my question, because if we go back to the State of the Union address and the conversation we had about that, talked about how Biden's messaging is very more so centrist and it is towards the moderate. So when you talk about two point seven billion dollars that is being provided to HBCUs. Who's excited about that? And I'm not saying that we don't want to know. We absolutely do. But that's us as black folks. That's how that 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 helps and benefits our community. I don't know that it does overall for him when it comes to these midterm elections that he's spending two point when they're already talking about inflation and how we're over budget and all this money that Biden's spending. If it sounds great that two point seven billion dollars is being used towards HBCUs. I don't know if that necessarily helps him in the overall picture. We want to know that. Right. But does that? I don't know. Right. So this money is being used, like we said, for a lot of things, but providing emergency grants, discharging outstanding student debt or unpaid balances. Look at that. That's amazing. Yes. And eliminating insane. transcript withholding practices. You guys understand how important that is right there? I've you know how many people I've known that literally couldn't get their transcripts to either transfer to another school or move on with their education because they owed some books in the sure. library or some dumb ass shit. Yep. Like it's like 
to be able to, anytime you can alleviate financial burden for any type of kid in the situation that some of the kids that go to HBCUs are, it's amazing. So you think that this is nefarious then? You yeah. think that they're not beating their chest about all of these money that they gave to the niggas because you think it hurts them politically. I, Rachel, that's so cynical. It is cynical, but when I'm I'm using context clues or circumstantial evidence, it does that that announcement. It I, I don't think this country can accept that that is great for everybody. Helping HBCUs helps the country. It's great for all of us to be able to provide funding for an under for underfunded colleges and universities. So we're all thriving. So we're all learning more. We're all growing. We're providing the best education and facilities for all people who are willing and wanting to learn. I don't think they see it that way. And I think that he will be criticized specifically from the other side for spending that much money on black folks. When has this country ever been excited that billions of dollars were being spent on black people? The crime bill? Correct. But again, that was against <laughs> black people. That wasn't for us. That was against us. And so it didn't help us. And I think that it's great in the sense that when black people are like, what did you do for us? You can point to and say, hey, we put aside $2.7 billion for HBCU, just like we promised we would. But for the people who aren't doing the research and aren't going to, you know, this website to find this information, they don't know. So then they can't complain and pick it apart. That's just what I think. By the way, it was mad black people who was fucking with the crime bill too, but we'll talk about that in another yeah, day. We we're coming to talk about y'all too. Fuck y'all. I was fucked it up I was too. too young. Put my fucking uncle in jail. I wasn't. I was like, that was that was the MTV spring break era. That was like ninety four, right? Yeah. I was that so was the era. Phase. You were in your white phase? What what did your white phase consist of? Whiteness. For what like what <laughs> kind of whiteness? You know, why didn't George Bush win? You lying. Why didn't I'm just kidding? I'm totally kidding. I'm so young. <laughs> just don't don't play with me. <laughs> I was too young. Yeah. Now, you know what? I gotta talk to you about something because you you always say that like I uh I make a big deal about stuff and then my anxiety takes over oh, and then it's like, and you're right. And so a lot of times actual concerns that I bring to the table get dismissed because I get put in a box. But I just want to make sure that I read this last topic for you. Okay. Okay. I get put in a box when I have actual concerns. So I'm concerned about you. Oh. And you, sometimes you don't listen. You put me in a box. How about this? A mountain lion has been spotted roaming Silver Lake. Oh. Residents of the hilly Los Angeles neighborhood reported sightings on social media of a goddamn mountain <laughs> lion and warned neighbors to be aware and stay cautious if they are out walking. The sightings occurred after 7 p.m., said Mariana Palka, who added that one of the neighbors called authorities. She wasn't sure whether or not her, her neighbor got through. Chris Blim, who also lives on Berkeley Circle, said he was standing in the street talking to his friend when something triggered a light on his neighbor's doorbell camera. He and the creature locked eyes. At first, he thought it was a coyote, but quickly realized it was a mountain lion, Blim said. We're just standing there looking at each other, and the light goes off. The only thing... You see is the eyes, and that was when a heart drops. This is not a house cat. Ultimately, it's pretty awesome, he said. The whole neighborhood is excited. That person is definitely white. Now, <laughs> so, so you have criticized and you have made fun of, you have made, you've poked all types, jabbed me over it, lampooned, <laughs> My discussion of a mountain lion. And look at this. Not even the hikings walking around a neighborhood mountain lion. What you got to say for yourself now? Ha! I Well, first of all, I'm upset that you're right. The, our conversation has been about seeing these creatures, like the article says, on hikes. 
The fact that now I can't walk in my neighborhood for fear of seeing my a mind. mountain lion is terrifying. Yes. So, so what do you want me to say, fam? Congratulations, I'm terrified. Congratulations, you were right that I could possibly yeah. be attacked by a mountain lion. I don't know where you want me to go with this. Yes, I'm scared. You happy? This is what I want you to do. This is what I want you to do. I don't need none of that shit. Okay. This is what I need. I need me and you to go choose sticks. Where do you and we need where to does one choose? Do that? See, here's the only problem. To get the best stick, you have to go into the heart of Mountain Lion. <laughs> you have to go, you I'll have to you see chances. you have to go to Griffith Park and find like a nice thick branch on the ground. And you have to sharpen it at the end. And I want to make sure that you have that stick whenever you go. Okay. Here, now it's not even about hiking anymore. Now I want you to make a sheath for it and put it on your back. And wherever you go someplace, I want to see, I want to see you leave like the red carpet and you're talking to people. Bye, girl. Bye, girl. And I want to see you pick up a sheath and put it on your back. And it will be a stick so you can fight off a mountain lion. This is how this whole conversation got started when I told you that I brought a stick because of mountain lion. Yes. And you, yeah. But Kalika and I have both done Griffith Park and I saw no such stick. Okay. I saw no big stick for us to have. Ooh, wow. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, I'll tell you why. Because she also is like you. She makes fun of me and thinks that I'm obsessed with it. What other part of the world we have a we let me tell you something about Louisiana. Okay. We have an alligator. We had in the pond in the back of my dad's house. Rest in peace, father. In the pond back in my dad's house, there was an alligator in the pond one time. It's a gator. It's a gator. It was bad, but you know what you do? What you do? The gator can't go nowhere. The gator had come up through the canal and he was in the backyard. You look at the, you sit there, you look at the gator, you're like, God damn, that's a real alligator. It's in the pond. You call the wildlife and fisheries, they go back there, they get the alligator. It's not like he could fly. Mount Lion is cagey. You know what I mean? Mount Lion is, is, is he's different. You, you might not be able to get him. He's stealthy. He comes out at night. <laughs> it's, it's terrifying. Um, we got breaking news. What? Jesse Smollett. Has been sentenced. What? You want to know for how long? Yeah. You want to guess? Uh, a month in jail. 150 days in jail. It's five months. Damn. For lying they to the, the police. Book. I'm going to be honest with you. In a hate crime hoax. Back okay. in January Let's talk about 2019, it. Jesse Smollett, Let's... breaking news, sentenced to five months in jail. Five months? Come on, man. They do the book at the. They do the book. At He's also nigga, ordered to pay twenty five thousand dollars. Okay, so Jesse Smollett got how many days? One hundred and fifty. Five months. All right. So Jesse Smollett makes up a story, and it's bad. You guys, I know you guys think I'm in the bag for Jesse. I'm not. I just don't think this is that big of a deal. Justice Millette makes up a story. We all know that he made up the story now. Jesse, I love you. You lied. You lied, bro. Okay? Once again, I will put it on the blueprint again. Justice Millette needs to come out and apologize to black America for lying. You lied, bro. I don't know why you did it, but you lied, my man. We all know. This sentence is harsh to me. Okay. Five months in jail for this, for a non-violent offender, Justice Millett, if anybody was the, 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 the victim of any violence, it was him. I don't know how much of this he's going to have to serve. I don't but if he has if he has to go to jail for five months because of this, that's fucked up. There's a gentleman named Adam Johnson. Yes, he is. Who was pictured as a Florida re resident carrying the podium from the floor of Congress. 
during the Capitol riots. He stormed the Capitol and took a fucking picture, broke into the Capitol building of the United States of America, took a picture. He got 75 days in prison. Ridiculous. You can't tell me that what Jussie Smollett did was twice as bad as the guy who stormed the Capitol and took the fucking podium. I'm sorry. I know he lied. It's just not that big of a deal, man. Well, make, make him pay a big ass fine. Make him do some community service. It's more bizarre than it is anything. But five months in jail? Well, what the fuck, dog? It, it, it's hard to compare to what happened at the Capitol and the sentencing in that case because that was a different state. That was a different judge. You're right. That guy, illegal, illegal. what that guy did definitely deserves more than 75 days for what he did, how he did it, the audacity of it. The, it's just, it's incredible. And again, in a negative way, sense of, um, of what happened. But that doesn't make me say that Jesse doesn't deserve the sentence that he received, especially when he could have gotten three years. I mean, let's not forget how this all went down. We've talked about this, so I don't want to get like deep into it and and go back and forth with it. I think we've had to agree to disagree when it comes to this. But people were really searching for these people who brutally attacked him. and, and, And he lied about the whole thing. And I still stand by the way that it does impact. I think it 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 just looks bad when there are people who actually suffer from hate crimes. And here you are making this. Stuff How does up. it look bad? Because you How lied. Does it look you bad? made up a whole thing, and people were really like, "This is what we're talking about. Racism still exists. This man was attacked." I mean, people were posting pictures. They were defending him, yeah. all because this dude was trying to bolster his image. And 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 his and his professional career, we we can agree to disagree. We talked about this on the podcast. No, we gotta we gotta relitigate this. I I, I just we were saying that racism and and so when you're pointing to racism still ex- still exists, and this man made this elaborate story about how he was a t- brutally attacked for the color of his skin, and it all turns out to be true. You don't want to do anything that plays into the minds of people to be able to say, well. No, it's 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 not true. Look at what happened to Jess, Jesse Smollett. I don't know. I I'm, I just, I'm fine. I'm fine with whatever he got. He could have got one month, five months. He needed some sort of punishment. I'm sorry. So so that's what I'm saying. Why have we you take it easy on him? Why would we take it easy on the black teller who fucked up and got? Like, give us audio. Yeah. This is yeah, Rachel. So he can speak. Your bias is Give showing. us audio of Jesse Smollett's give us reaction audio so we can hear some Give us audio lies. of Jesse right now. Give us the audio now. Yes, Your Honor, I am, uh, I am not suicidal. That's what I was about to say. Okay. I am not suicidal. Okay. Okay. I am not suicidal. Okay. I am not suicidal. I am innocent, and I am not suicidal. If I did this, then it means that I stuck my fist in the fears of black Americans in this country for over 400 years and the fears of the LGBTQ community. Your Honor, I respect you and I respect the jury, but I did not do this. And I am not suicidal. And if anything happens to me when I go in there, I did not do it to myself. And you must all know that. I respect you, Your Honor. I respect your decision. Jail time. I am not suicidal. Jesse's making it hard for me. I'm not gonna lie, Jesse's making it hard for me. Like, look, and by the way, look, by the way, I want to tell you guys something this. Just make sure we know this, right? I'm really not in the bad for Jesse. I really not. I just really don't think this is that big of a deal. He did break the law. I don't think it's worse than storming the Capitol. I think more so, I'm not talking about the fact worse. that. It's, I know, I, but that was bad. He was performing like it's like Jesse got to come clean. Insane, insane. Jesse got to come clean. Jesse got to come clean. Jesse got to come clean though. But I I do think it's interesting that you think that we should we should we should show pity to the woman that got Ryan Coogler hit. I didn't say that. But Jesse, I said you shouldn't. But it's like fuck Jesse. No, I didn't. And stop, stop. 
But, um, <laughs> you know, Jesse, I hope, you know, I don't know how long he'll serve in jail, but I hope that he finds some sort of, um, I don't ever expect him to admit, like at this point, you're so deep, you're so in deep, like you got to just stand by your lie. Like you, 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 you put this out there too long. It is what it is. You know, I um, wish him the best. Next. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> okay. Rachel, we got to talk about something and it's, it's going to be close to home to you. We got to talk about Emmanuel Acho real quick. I'm fine. Let's <laughs> talk about it. <laughs> okay. I'm sure that Emmanuel Acho, and I said this on Bill's podcast, but, but I'm sure that Emmanuel Acho will hear this or get word of it. But the clown show has to stop. You said it on Bill's podcast? I did. I did. The clown show has to stop. So there are two different instances this week of the clown show. And I say clown show, I'm not saying that Emmanuel Acho is a clown. I'm not. What I'm saying is he's definitely putting on a show right now. For who? He's I, for the whites. No, that's the problem. So two things happen. One is bad. The other one I think is actually irresponsible. All right. There was some talk about black quarterbacks. Lamar Jackson, quarterback for the Baltimore Ravens, said that there's still discrimination. He actually says he was misquoted to Adam Schefter, whatever. But he he, he seemed to indicate that there was still some discrimination that exists for a black quarterback. Right? Yes. He absolutely look, indicated that. Right. I can't speak to that because I'm not a black quarterback in the NFL. I could say, though, that I think it's still a pretty safe bet that the guy who won the Heisman Trophy and then had a bunch of people like Bill Poley and said that he saying that he should play another position probably feels that way. By the way, not specifically a black thing. The same thing happened to Tim Tebow. But I can't put myself in the position of Lamar Jackson without putting myself in the position of Lamar Jackson, right? Two things happen. Number one, of course, if somebody alleges any type of racial discrimination, racial bias, racial inequality, of course, it's Emmanuel Acho's job to go on Speak for Yourself with Marcellus Wiley and make sure everybody knows that that's not true. Right. Everyone knows that that's not true. That these are the reasons why he said it's not a racial problem. He said it's a racial problem. And he broke it down, broke it down into numbers about why certain different players based upon these numbers statistically and all of these things have this bias against them. Reducing the entire issue down to one of current day statistics and not in any way. His argument was so reductive because he did not take into consideration the years and years and years that this has built up. The perception that exists from peewee ball all the way up to the pros. It's just too layered an issue for that short little segment. And he certainly did nothing to dispel the, 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 the feeling that Lamar Jackson might have in terms of being a quarterback running the team, running the offense. It's certainly getting better. We're seeing more black quarterbacks all the time. But if Lamar Jackson is telling you that he still feels this, I don't quite understand why Emmanuel Acho feels like it's his job to tell everyone that what Lamar Jackson feels isn't valid. And I'm wondering, as a black man, why he would even want to do that. Mm. Okay, secondly, Calvin Ridley been on some NFL games, mm -hmm. right? Emmanuel Acho sent a tweet out mm -hmm. of a bunch of Calvin Ridley plays mm -hmm. and said something that's, the tweet has since been deleted, I'm paraphrasing it, said something like, well, I'm not saying that Calvin Ridley was throwing games, but this evidence certainly is damning. Yo, my nigga, what the fuck, bruh? The NFL invested the Calvin Ridley situation. They said that they found no evidence that he in any way compromised NFL games with the $1,500 parlay that he put down when he was on mental health leave. For Emmanuel Acho to go on his Twitter and insinuate 
that this nigga is the 1919 White Sox or for him to go on his and insinuate that he is the fixes in is such an outrageous claim. It is. Even if you're thinking it, even if you're thinking it, to say that and put that in people's minds about that brother is fucking crazy. This comes after the fucking Shikari Richardson tweet where he said that he wasn't so sure Olympic athletes should be able to smoke weed because he's worried about somebody getting high while they're throwing javelin and killing somebody else. Well, Rachel, I know. are we going to stop the clown show? Listen, What's up with your man? Listen, stop that. I mean, I've known Emmanuel Washo for years, but the same way you got to call out family and friends when you see them doing something wrong because you just want to see them be them, their best selves, that's what we got to do right here. I can't defend this type of behavior. I mean, I think the fact that he deleted the Calvin Ridley tweet says it all. Like, it was irresponsible. It was reckless. And you're putting a narrative out there that is actually very damaging to his reputation when the NFL itself found that there was no foul play in regards to that. And we talked about our opinions in regards to Calvin Ridley. So y'all know where we stand with that. I understand the pressure of having a TV show where you have to have an opinion in regards to sports that is on five days a week. And there's this pressure to have a, a, a novel argument and to take a risk and to do something that generates conversation and uh, might be a little bit polarizing. I get that. You want that. But that doesn't mean that you cross the line of it just being asinine. Because that's what this was. And so the Calvin Ridley, you said it best with the word irresponsible, and it was detrimental to him and what he has going on, especially when this is a brother who's struggling with his mental health. For you to, put, for you to put footage up there and to insinuate that he was throwing games when the very games that he bet on he wasn't even in makes no sense. So I don't understand where you were coming from with that. And in regards to Lamar, you want to talk about ratios? I think the most damaging thing that Lamar said in regards to his combine was the fact that they asked him to run wide receiver drills. Where's the ratio of asking white quarterbacks versus black quarterbacks to run wide receiver drills? That's what That's I would want to know. a great point. That's what I want to know. Did Justin Herbert get asked that? You know what I mean? Did Danny Dimes get asked that? Was Joe Burrow asked that? That's what I want to know. If you want to throw up ratios, let's make this a well-rounded thing. Well, those guys are passers, though. But, but to ask Lamar Jackson, who won the Heisman, if he, to, to run wide receiver just shows that you are not confident in his ability to be able to be a starting cornerback when he won a top honor in college football. That shows the bias that exists within the NFL and the various 32 teams. To me, you trying to show it any other way when this is so obvious, to me, was not the hill that you needed to die on. And that's what I don't understand. And so fam, we be family and friends, but when you wrong, we got to call you out. And it should be known that we asked Emmanuel Osho to come on this podcast. Duck in the smoke. I just want to say that. Look, yes. By the way, let me tell you. Let me let me tell you guys something real quick. I know about the clown show because I've put it on before. You guys know. Come on. He got his tap dancing shoes in the closet. You guys know I've been a part. I have Be to. careful with the tap dancing. Look, I got to take them on there. <laughs> All right. You know. You know. You know that. You know that I've put on the clown show. It's hard for me to enough. It's hard enough for me to stop my own clown show. <laughs> right. So I get it. I understand sometimes you want to put the clock. But I'm telling Emmanuel Ajo right now that his clown show is going too far now. Stop the clown show. Cut it. Cut the shit, Emmanuel. Mailback. Mailback time. Time to read your letters and then we'll reply to them. Oh. It's mailbag time. Write us with your queries and we'll chime in. All right. 
Aya Danger wants to know, uh, what is your, oh, no, no, no. She phrases it this way. Favorite cartoon growing up? Huh. Oh, the Care Bears. The Care Bears are great. Care Bears are great. They had a message. Colorful. Did you like, positive. did you like them? Did you like them better or did you like their cousins better? Oh, the Care Cousins? Um, definitely. The Lion and stuff. Yeah, yeah, no. I'm well-versed in Care Bear world. Um, Definitely the originals, the OGs. I still have a 1985 Grumpy Care Bear, probably worth some money. Uh, yeah, from back in the day. Love Cousins were better. Braveheart Bear. Braveheart, Braveheart the Lion. I love the Care Bear Cousins. <laughs> Stuff like that makes me cry. Why does it like, when, why do I want to cry so when beautiful. I think about the Care Bears? They were so sweet. Care a lot. We care a lot. A lot, yeah. <laughs> I, I, they, it's like... Little niggas now, they cartoons running around. They got special, like the Care Bears was just like it's friends. Just, we want to be friends. It was all about making people care about what's happening. Care in the world and your feelings. It's such a good message. What was wrong? What was the uh, the bad guy in the Care Bears? What was his name again? Blackheart. It was dark Blackheart. Heart. No, it's Dark Heart. Dark Heart. It's Dark Heart. Dark Heart. I like the Care Bears, Black but of course, for, for Blackheart, Blackheart is a Marvel character. No worse with this stuff. Um. There are two. There has to be a tie for me. Okay. One is the Thundercats. <laughs> Actually, it's a three-way tie. I'm sorry. It's a three-way tie. Thundercats. Okay, so they're, they're, two of them are afternoon cartoons. <laughs> and then one of them is a Saturday morning cartoon. Ooh, the Saturday mornings were great. All right. Okay. So the, the Thundercats and He-Man, okay. they were both afternoon cartoons. I just remember I would come home. I hope I get home in time for He-Man because after He-Man came on, Santa Barbara came on, and then you were fucked if you had to watch Santa Barbara. <laughs> like, so, but then Saturday morning, it was the get-along gang, baby. I don't know the get-along gang. Woo! They had a moose in a, in a sweater, and he was their leader, you know? Uh, let me see. He, like, they used to have different adventures. They used to be on a train. It's the get-along gang. Mr. T had a... Uh, Mr. T had a cartoon that was okay. I don't know why they had Mr. T's people doing it. I think Captain Planet look, was a part of Saturday morning, but I'm not sure. Look, look at the get along game. Look at these niggas. I've these niggas is lit. I've never seen them before in my <laughs> life. Not <laughs> a one. These niggas is lit. Oh my God. Not a one. These they niggas is lit. Look, they look like bears. They got a, bears. I've never they, seen them. I've never seen them. They got a fucking lamb. They got a goddamn dog. They got a couple of dogs. They got a beaver. And then they got the moose in the front. The get along game was lit. It was great. I loved yeah, it. I love the get along game. There. I don't give a fuck. All right, <laughs> what else? Question. All right, Kyle Fauche asks, what game show would the Lindsay's and Lathan's be best at? Oh, Family Feud. Family Feud for the Lindsay's? Yeah, yeah. My, parents, my, my family would be terrible. Actually, at my food. dad would be awful. He would try to argue the point. Like he would make the answer, right. he would try to argue why it was correct. But right. we love Family Feud. Family Feud. Uh, mine would be the the twenty five thousand dollar pyramid. Oh gosh, that's part of Heads Up Seven Up that we're gonna play this weekend. You know, it's kind of like that. Oh, for real? Well, no, yeah. you know, you get the guess, seven. you have to describe. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I love that game. Twenty five thousand dollar pyramid would be would be my family would be good at that just because like we're good on playing off of each yeah. other. Yeah. Like me and my mom yeah. and my sister. All right, one more, Donnie. Make it the best one. All right. Uh, from Paige and Cats, what's something you always thought was true until you learned otherwise? No, let's do the other one. All right. Let's do both of them, actually. Go ahead. By the other one, there's two options. Okay, I'm going to go with this one. What, Amy Fontana. Okay, cool. What are your thoughts on interracial adoption slash how to support a Black child in a white family? <laughs> This has nothing to do with me, so I don't know why you're looking at me like that. <laughs> I'm not looking at you <laughs> like what? The? All I, I mean, I don't have a problem with it if you're gonna give if you're going to give a child a loving home, but then you need to make sure that you put things in place for the child to understand who they are and where they come from. I'm not about all that. We don't see color, you know. We just love. Uh. Uh-uh. For example, when I lived in Dallas before I went on Bachelor, I had there was a family that moved underneath me, white couple adopted a black daughter. And she couldn't do her hair. And she came to me and asked me, and I appreciated that. And I took out my bucket. I had all my tools. I did her hair for her. um, And I told her what products that she needed. And I appreciated that she came to another Black woman to understand how to do her daughter's hair. So I don't have a problem with it as long as you don't make them lose their identity in the process. 
These are my thoughts. Have fun with it. And this is what I mean. You already ruined this little nigga life. So you might as well document the moments that they don't know what they're supposed to do. You know what I'm saying? You already you already fucked their life up by doing this to them. They're going to come out fucking wearing a sweater vest. You know, all of that stuff like that. So you've already fucked them up. So it was your decision. And so because it was your decision, you might as well document it for the rest of us so we can have fun. Like, for example... No. Teach them how to dance however y'all dance. Whatever it is that y'all do, like you want to, you know, get slap happy or do the river dance or whatever. And then what I want to see is video of the first time he goes to a dance at the All Black Community Center and he starts river dancing. I want to see the looks on the other faces because of the kids. Because that's what happens. Yeah, that's what, I mean, look, it. this is the type of shit I'm saying. You don't give a fuck, right? You already want to you want to do this. You want to adopt a good kid into a good home. So just have fun with it. Have fun with it. You know, like throw some shit out there. Go wacky. Go crazy. Because these kids, these kids are, let's be honest with you. These kids are always a little weird. And that's the charm of them. The charm of them is that they're all there. <laughs> you're laughing because you know it's true. These, these kids are these kids are always a little weird. And that's the charm. Don't take the charm away from them. I want to meet them. And this answer. I want to meet them freshman year in college and explain to them what a do-rag is. That's fun. For who? That's fun. For who? Like, for that's you. For, it's, it's fun for a oh, dog. You don't know what a do-rag is? No, mom. Mom. Mom takes me. Mom not, takes me to the place. And I go to the super cuts and they just give me a number one. And it's it's shit bad. Dog, you got a buddy could put this do rag on your naps is crying. Anyway, yes. all right, last last one. All right. Uh, did you watch Love Is Blind on Netflix? No. What are your thoughts about Shake? Okay, Van. What are nope. your thoughts about Mail Shake? Mailbag is over. Yep. Fuck fat. Fuck fuck. Love Is Blind. We don't, don't watch fuck. it. I'm, don't watch I'm it. not watching another one of those shows. <laughs> fuck it. All right. Uh, do you have an unexpected ally of the week? It was the nine one one operator. I actually think she did a horrible job. No, nine one one operator. <laughs> uh, do I have an unexpected ally of the week? No, I don't. I ain't got no allies. <laughs> I I tell you what. I tell you what. My unexpected ally of the week is the Ringer verse Reddit. That's Making not unexpected. <laughs> It would be unexpected if it was the Thought Warriors Reddit. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, you guys know that we love you. Just come on, man. Relax. Um, that's it. Big time podcast. Justice Millet. People are always going crazy over the Justice Millet thing. I still want to try to get Jesse on the podcast. I don't think he's going to come on it now that I've said that I think that he's guilty. Um, but you have any last words on Justice Millet? I'm Smollett sure that he'd be leave? more than willing to perform. Let's go ahead and um, uh, fade out the podcast to uh, Locked Up by uh, Akon. <laughs> Thought Warriors. <laughs> Take it. <laughs> but don't stop thinking. <laughs> I'm Rachel Lindsay. I'm Lindsay Jr. Play it, dog. Get it. <laughs> I'm steady trying to find the motive